is an indie horror film, horror thriller that is coming to, well, she's going to tell us, coming to VOD eventually. Mary Gallagher, director Mary Gallagher, is joining us on the show today. Hey, Mary, good to see you. Hi. Uh, hi, Chris. How are you? Oh, wow. You're a little hot. You're a little hot. Uh, it's, uh, the, the, the volume is a little loud. Oh, sorry. Okay, it's all good. It's all good. Tell us okay. about your film, <laughs> Holiday. So Holiday, I think, would I, looking back, I'd say it's more of a suspense thriller than horror. That's the feedback I'm getting. Uh, um, it's currently on Amazon Prime Video. I'm excited. It's been out three weeks now. Shot it last April here in Vegas. I actually shot it in my house. Uh, behind me is one of the sets. Uh, it takes place in San Diego. It's uh, two couples who don't know each other. They double book a vacation house in San Diego and strange, strange things start to happen. And they continue to happen until it unravels all at the end. And it's a the indie film. My distributor is Breaking Glass Pictures. Uh, there's six characters in it. Had a great time shooting it. Uh, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback and I'm already working on Hall Estate 2. Might shoot tell, that, tell that in me, Ireland. Tell me how, because this is the number one question we get from uh, people who want to make an indie movie. How did you get the financing for your film? Private equity, private equity money. You know, some people do crowdfunding. Uh, the thing about crowdfunding is you have to have everybody's personal contact information. And it's you can't really rely on all the social media contacts and unless you have their personal information um, there are some platforms the best way to do it is just to reach out to people who believe in your project and uh, want to help you know going back to the Cohen brothers right blood simple their first film uh, they went and got their funding from friends family and credit cards right so <laughs> they took a risk and it, and it worked out. So, you know, no risk, no reward. It's, it's very challenging to raise money for any film, really. Um, studios yeah. have the same problem because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a risk. It's not a tangible asset like investing in real estate project. You don't really see the results until it's up on the screen or to see if people are going to like it. Um, and if you spend an awful lot of money on it and it doesn't work, then that's problematic. So uh, it's important to keep the budget realistic, low for indie films, and uh, just look for resourceful ways to, to raise your money or to convince people that you have a good product, project, product and that they will benefit from it later. Uh, I that's what I would suggest. I find that most people that invest in movies really have no expectation they're going to get their money back. They're really investing to support the arts. They're, they're investing in you. So congratulations for that. Thank you. Uh, you know, there are people who are skeptical, though, and you have to do kind of a song and a dance around it. And then I think the, the appeal to it to first-time film investors, and you are right, they just want to help out. But um, there are some who... Uh, are a little bit skeptical. So, but I think the overall draw and appeal is not only helping a filmmaker, but the fact that they're involved in a film project, and then they, right, can, right. they get it their is, name. I'm they get it. their name up. Better, on, yeah, you get the producer credit or executive producer credit. You get to go to the premiere and you get to brag to your friends. Uh, at, you know, at, at, at the country club, you get to say, "Hey, I invested in a movie." We've got a lot of That's comments and questions for you. Actually, I wanted to ask you: Is oh, do you have okay. a tip on the? Do you have a tip about the song and dance? Like, what? How? Do, what did you? What were you thinking when you went into the meetings? And and what did you? What did you think would sell sell the film to an investor? Well, I, I you know, I, I try to not do a big dog and pony show. Uh, if you are interested already, if you're having a conversation about it, you are interested. There are lots that don't come to the table at the end. They get scared or somebody talks them out of it. Uh, but I, again, I go back to if, you know, these people that want to be involved want to see their name 
in a credit. They want to say, hey, I was involved in a film. And so that's sort of the draw. And then you have to kind of say to them, look, you know, we could do more projects. And then you could get known. And then people, more people are going to come to you. And then you could be a bigger player, which is all true. So as you as you start to move through your networks and start to identify people that you think would be interested. I mean, I remember 20 years ago, it was very easy to get money for films back then. Um, you know, I'm from Philadelphia originally, and there was a lot of people like developers who would love to put five million into a project or or, you know, a hundred million in a project just to have their just to say, hey, I'm in the game. You know, that was when the economy was was a little different. But, you know, on a smaller level, um, it's people just they like the idea. And like you said, they like to go to the country club or the bar and say, hey, I'm in a movie. I'm involved, you know, because it's a, it's a very pop culture thing for people to be involved in the entertainment business. Everybody wants to be a YouTube star, right? Everybody wants to be a TikTok star. So this is a way they can get in the door in a serious manner and perhaps do more, more film work if, if, if they, if they like it, it takes a while to get paid back though. You know, it takes, it's, it's not immediate. You have to wait to get your results. So, yeah, yeah, uh, that's sort of what I had to do. Let's go to, uh, we have a lot of people in our chat. We have like uh, 900 people watching live. So uh, on YouTube, our audience, thank you to our audience. They're uh, always love when we bring, you know, new filmmakers on. Um, let's go to these comments and questions from our audience. Uh, let's see. Greetings, Mary. Madam Mary, says Solomon Thornton. Hail Mary, says Stephen Mack. Um, <laughs> Flyin Saucer says, my wife says she loves your 20s bell hat. That's great. Thank and you. Fletcher, Fletcher Williams, I suck at game channel, says, welcome, Mary. What was your inspiration for the film? So I had done a, I had a bigger project in the works uh, that fell out during COVID. So when I was thinking to myself, what can I do now? I decided to do something on a much smaller level, more doable. And my distributor said, Breaking Glass Pictures, Richard Wolf, my longtime friend, he said, why don't you do a horror movie, Mary? Just do a little indie horror movie. So I said to myself, you know what? That sounds interesting. I'm not a fan of slasher films, to be very clear. I like ghost stories. I like old, old slow burn type of film, like Alfred Hitchcock is one of my favorite writer directors. Um, story, it, it tells a story. So I started to put this together and I looked at some of my the, uh, horror movies that I liked in the past, like Halloween, for example. Halloween 1978 had no special effects. All was lighting and music, right? Lighting, music, the mask coming out, scary. Back then they didn't have the CGI. So that's, I didn't have the budget for special effects. So I have to look and, and create ways to create suspense. That was one of them. I like The Strangers, 2008, Brian Bertino's film. Just a bunch of people in masks. Terrorizing Liv Tyler and her boyfriend in the cabin, right? In the woods. Terrifying, but no special effects. So you have to think along the lines when I wrote the script, I'm thinking, how can I make this work on a limited budget of what I had, you know, I had, I decided to just work with what I had rather than wait, 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 raise more, raise more, because as time goes on, you, you lose the thread. So I had to, it was either now or never, which is last April I shot, April 2022. So, so that was sort of, as I started to craft this story in my head and I thought this one couple has to be perfect, right? So who, who can I put, and I'm thinking everyone loves Irish people right? They're popular, they're fun, they're interesting. My husband's from Ireland. Great, great country, great way to introduce this couple shot in the States, right? A shot in, uh, like I said, a shot in Vegas takes place in San Diego. But so I started to put that together. And then I thought, why don't I make this really suspenseful? So I created a very slow burn. It is, it is a slow burn. It's not constant, constant, constant. I did old school, like again, going back to the Hitchcock or to Halloween, you had to wait a while before you saw anything. And, you know, hopefully it worked. I've had, I've had a lot of positive feedback, uh, especially from women. Women really liked this film. I looked 
my analytics, I have about 10,000 hits on TikTok currently on my trailer. And the people who've watched it, it's women. They liked it. Not to say men didn't, but it's interesting. Mm -hmm. And I and I didn't really craft it that way. I was hoping, it, you know, both gender audience. So I hope that answers the question. I, I went off track a bit. <laughs> uh, real quick, uh, let's see, Mary Kathleen, Mary Catherine Gallagher, superstar. I think that's a joke from Maynard Lloyd. And um, uh, let's see, any advice for beginning filmmakers as Solomon Thornton? Yes, just keep doing it. Don't listen to the naysayers in the room. There's a whole lot of people who don't want to see you do stuff. They'll say, no, nah, you can't do that. Oh, that's ridiculous. Oh, no, you'll never get that done. You know, when I moved to California from Philadelphia, I was a political writer for 15 years. I did a documentary. Paper got downsized, started a new career, moved. I wrote people said, oh, no, you know what? You're going to be one of those people that's going to just move back because you didn't get anything done. And it took me 10 years to do my first project. You just have to really stick with it. Stick with it and don't listen to people. Do Follow your own inner id. If you want to get it done, you can. Thoughts are things. That's what they taught me in school. Catholic school I went to. Yeah. My middle name's not Catherine. It's Agnes. But. <laughs> uh, here we go. Um, Agnes. <laughs> Spidey Sensei 72 says, just looked up the cast. I'll watch this weekend just to see Gabriela Kulev. So. Gabri go. Yeah. Gabriela Kulev is Brazilian actress. She was a model. This is her second film, and she's actually in real life married to Stephen Martini, who plays Tony. Mm -hmm. So they were already a couple when when we started. Uh, when I started this, it was actually during in the waning part of COVID. So it was you wanted people who had familiarity with each other for safety purposes, and that's how that kind of played out. And she actually worked really well uh, for for the part. I hope you I hope you like her performance. And here from Rumble, a question, would Mary consider doing a sequel to her 2008 doc because its topic seems more prescient than ever being about politics and the public's belief in the system that runs it? Uh, I'd like to. Uh, the thing with documentaries is they take a very long time. That electile dysfunction shot it in two, uh, began it in 2006, came out 2008. It was on Netflix for a while. Very timely. Um, I don't know if I have the time. Uh, you do have to travel all over the place uh, if you're doing something on this broad spectrum. It's a great thought, and I appreciate it, and it's something to consider. I'm currently working on Hollow State 2. Hollow State's a trilogy, 1, 2, and 3. So, um, but, you know, anything's possible. Anything's possible. I could put a quick crew together and go tour the country, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> to talk about, you know, it's, it is a great time. It is a great time to do that. It is a great time. That's a very good suggestion. I, I'll, I'll meditate on that for sure. Quick comment. Um, Jimmy Francis says, finding the money takes so long can easily kill your motivation before you've started. You need to believe in it for a very long time. So there you go. Yes, you do have to believe in it. Uh, and I think once you get some people interested, it's easy to get more. You just have to get that first person, that first person in the room. And then and once Fletcher, you start the party. <laughs> Fletcher Williams asks, what did you use for filming, editing, and color correction? So my DP had a red camera. Um, I had about a six uh person crew my editor did the color too uh she did all that you can you can get people who can when if you have a good editor i'm not sure what color she did she used um the lutz we had to get uh which is the film uh over the lens uh she she did all that i can get find out exactly what it was i have it written in my notes somewhere sometimes what uh in edit you'll have um You'll do the, the the raw edit, and then you'll do the sound and color later at another source. But if you could find someone to do everything, then that's key because you can save yourself a lot of money. And and today it, uh, it's so uh, you can get all these programs in your in 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 the computer system. Like she had everything set up. You know, I remember back 
in the day, we had to go to the old editing bays and rent, you know, rent the, the edit bays and get the editor to come in and you have to sit there together. Now it's all virtual. She'll just send you a link and you use, you know, for each scene and yeah, your nay. And so then you go back and forth. Um, I want it color to be sort of surreal and not totally bold, you know, to create that sort of ambiance. Um, but I can get some more specifics if you want to leave your information on what what she actually used for the for the color for that for the LUT for those particular scenes for the scenes. Well, I feel like I really I feel like I really want to check out your movie Electile Dysfunction. Uh, so, it's on YouTube. Okay. It's on YouTube. Yeah. You can just okay. tap it in okay, because I expired. Yeah, Electile Dysfunction. Look it up. It's uh, Mary Gallagher's documentary. And a last question here. Um, and we should remind people the movie, you can see it on Amazon prime video right now. Your final question here from Matt Shannon asks, what's more interesting to you, documentaries or narrative feature films? Right now it's features, uh, documentaries. Like I said, I was a journalist for 15 years. It's basically interviews on celluloid. It's very, it's fascinating. It's I, I love to do it. However, it is it does take a very, very long time. And it's very you have to also remember you have to be in the loop to get those interviews. So if you want to interview high profile people, politicians or people in, in the loop for your uh, for your documentary, if you're doing that, that route, political documentary, you have to you have to have some credential to get in the door. So the most challenging thing in a documentary is is securing those and use them to agree to to, to be interviewed. Um, by you. Back then, I was a licensed or you know credited journalist, so it was easy. Now I don't know. Um, you know, they you, you have the blockers in the room, the staff people that say, "Well, who are you, and what do you want?" Because they're trying to protect the person from a bad interview or something. Because once it's out there, it's out there. I prefer features because I have more creativity in it, and I have, you know, it's it's fiction, so you don't have to have you know 400 releases. Or be careful about what you're what you're putting up, even if it is a public figure. Today has it's changed a lot since I did my documentary in 2008. You know, it's 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 different now. It's a different culture, so you have to be very careful about what you present. And in, in features, you have the create creative license, so you have your script and you have you know it's fantasy and fiction. There's always a disclaimer. So. Um, I would, I, right now I prefer, I prefer features, although you could do a hybrid thing. You could do sort of, I've seen those too. I've seen a mixture of documentary and feature where you, but you have, it's very careful to the fine line. But if you want to do a documentary, you could just, you know, it's, it's cheaper. You could just get your camera and go out there, you know, and today well, you can put uh, it up wanna, anywhere. Well, I want to thank you, Mary, for joining us on the show today. Holiday Thanks, Chris. is on Amazon Prime. Thank you so much. Uh, stay cool in Vegas. I know it's a little hot there. And uh, good luck with the hurricane we're about to send you. Uh, uh, well, you know what? We're actually out of the hurricane. Oh, good. It, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, under the eye. That was yesterday. Yeah. There you go. Uh, all right. Take care, Mary. Thank you so much. Bye.